make sure you hit the thumbs up that's a like then hit subscribe and hit that bell and watch my whole video hey would you like to see me create a drawing using my iPad and the Procreate app to create a work of art about none other than Old Man Eloquent, the Lion of Anacostia, D.C. I'm talking about Fred. Frederick Douglass. I call him Fred because I've been working on this for a couple weeks and I feel like we've gotten this relationship almost like He's been here checking me out while I've been doing this or looking over my shoulder. But Frederick Douglass was one of the most photographed individuals in the 19th century. And I know why, because he had that mane. He had that lion mane. And he was a very larger than life black man. And I want to share things that I found out about him with you today while I create this work of art expressing how I feel about the man, Frederick Douglass. Just watch. Frederick Douglass was an escaped slave who became a prominent activist, author, and public speaker. He became a leader in the abolitionist movement, which sought to end the practice of slavery before and during the Civil War. After that conflict and the Emancipation Proclamation of 1862, he continued to push for equality and human rights until his death in 1895. Frederick Douglass was born into slavery in or around 1818 in Talbot County, Maryland. Douglass himself was never sure of his exact birth. His mother of Native American ancestry and his father was of African European descent. He was actually born Frederick Bailey, his mother's name, and took the name Douglas only after he escaped. His full name at birth was Frederick Washington Bailey. After he was separated from his mother as an infant, Douglas lived for a long time with his maternal grandmother, Betty Bailey. However, at age six, he was moved away from her to live and work on the Y House Plantation. From there, Douglas was given to Lucreta All, whose husband, Thomas, sent him to work with his brother, Hugh, in Baltimore. Douglas credits Hugh's wife, Sophia, with first teaching him the alphabet. From there, he taught himself to read and to write. By the time he was hired out to work under William Friedland, he was teaching other enslaved people to read using the Bible. As word spread of his efforts to educate fellow enslaved people, Thomas Awe took him back and transferred him to Edward Covey, a farmer was known for his brutality and harsh treatment of enslaved people. Roughly 16 at this time, Douglas was regularly whipped by Covey. After several failed attempts to escape, Douglas finally left Covey's farm in 1838, first boarding a train to Harvard Grace, Maryland, from there, he traveled through Delaware until finally arriving in New York and the safe house of an abolitionist, David Ruggles. Once settled in New York, he sent for Anna Mary, a free black woman from Baltimore he had met 
while in captivity with the Alls. She joined him. The two were married in September 1838, where they would have five children together. Douglas had joined the abolitionist group and started to speak to crowds and to share his stories of being a slave and the hardships that had prevailed. Douglas wrote several autobiographies, the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. He also authored My Bondage, My Freedom, and Life and Times of Frederick Douglass. By writing and speaking about his experiences, it helped the cause to free other slaves and to let the world know the true experience of being an enslaved person. But Douglas not only spoke about the rights of enslaved people, he was very well connected in the movement for women's rights. He was the only African American to attend the Seneca Falls Convention of a gathering of women's rights activists in New York in 1848. The brutal conflict that divided the still young United States. Douglas continued to speak and work tirelessly for the end of slavery and the right of newly free black Americans. Although he supported President Abraham Lincoln in the early years of the Civil War, Douglas would fall into disagreement with the politician after the Emancipation Proclamation, which effectively ended the practice of slavery. But Douglas was disappointed that Lincoln didn't use the proclamation to grant formerly enslaved people the right to vote, particularly after they fought so bravely alongside soldiers in the Union Army. In the post-war Reconstruction era, Douglas served in many official positions in government, including an ambassador to the Dominican Republic, thereby becoming the first black man to hold high office. He also continued speaking and advocating for American and women's rights. His house can still be seen in Washington, D.C. in Anacostia. Douglas remained an active speaker writer and activist until his death in 1895. He died after suffering a heart attack on his way from home to a meeting of the National Council of Women. His work still serves as inspiration for those who seek equality and a more just society. <laughs>